Hello and welcome to Cap House. I want to talk to you today about personal protective equipment. Now, you will have heard lots of comments about PP, as it's commonly termed, uh, because of the coronavirus situation. But in coal mining, we've been wearing PP for many years. Um, so I just want to talk through the different elements of it, which allows us to keep safe. So if you can look at me, I've already been in the lockers and I've got my pit boots on, I've got my trousers on and I've got my vest or t-shirt on. Now in the early days these would not have had reflective strips on, it would have just been pure orange or sometimes blue for management. In some mines it's extremely warm so it wasn't uncommon for miners just to wear the basic PP then a pair of shorts and any other protective safety equipment what they would have to use. Now the shorts what we typically wore was some very similar to these, again they've got the stripe on it. Not much room to hold your personal belongings so you would have to carry a bag. So they're very typical of what the miners used to wear. But even in warmer conditions than that, and we could be talking 33, 34 degrees effective temperature with, with the humidities of up to 90%, it wasn't uncommon that people would what we call wear air tech shorts. So basically they've got holes in them just like a tea bag. And if you're underground in extremely warm conditions, it allows you to breathe and to get rid of the heat a little bit more. So I want to go through each element of the rest of the PP, what we would normally wear now before going underground. So we put his helmet on, the obvious thing. As you can see, I've got ear protectors. So they would come down. Typically, when we get to areas above 80 or 85 dBA, it will be compulsory to wear these. So it's not compulsory to wear them all the time but it is compulsory to wear them in specified noise zones. The ear defenders haven't always been there. We have had plugs and uh, sort of the late uh, 1990s is when the ear defenders came in as compulsory for people to wear. So I've got my helmet, I've got my ear defenders. We've got some shin guards now. Again, these haven't always been in. These are pretty recent. Basically one round one. And one round the other. Now the main reason why these shin guards were brought in is because on studies it was identified that the majority of the accidents were caused in the lower part of the leg and it could be lumps falling from the roof, it could be banging or grazing your knee or your ankle. And bear in mind, some people only wore shorts, so there wasn't any trousers for protection. So these gave a lot of protection. It also has um, rubber outlets on it, so that it, it protected your boots as well, so that it stopped debris falling into the top of the boots. So again, it did form some of protection to bottom of leg. So there are the, the shin guards. If we're working in a mine in very dusty conditions, we have got face masks, very similar to the ones what people are wearing now. Just pull it over, it's got a breathing space through it. That would allow us to work in conditions which are um, pretty hazardous, but at least it would form some protection. Then we've got glasses or goggles. So the glasses are protective glasses, but we also have full face goggles or visors, what we could wear as well. So again, we put them on. So if we've got them on, them on, and them on, as you can see, The face and the head is pretty well protected. Some of the other things what we wear, what we call protective equipment or what is going to protect us, is when we put our belt on. So we're coming to a lamp room like this. We'd have his own personal belt with a light or a lamp and a self-rescuer. So the lamp would basically clip into your helmet, round the back of the air defenders, and then also obviously we can see underground. But this thing at the back here, this metal object, is what we call a self-rescuer. Now if there was a fire underground or an explosion, one of the elements or some of the, uh, the problems that come from explosions is carbon monoxide. Inside this metal container is this. So basically it has a mouthpiece and it has a nose clip. I'm not going to put it on because it's not mine. So you put the mouthpiece in 
you'd put the nose clip on and then you would put this strap to the back of the head. This will save people's lives because in there there's a chemical compound and when you breathe into it, it breathes the air including the smoke and this converts carbon monoxide into breathable amounts of carbon dioxide. It allows you to breathe, it's good for an hour to an hour and a half so in the effects of a fire or an explosion underground this little baby can save people's lives and it did save many many lives so it's very very important that we use that as part of our PP as well.